Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to the second live webinar of Admit Guru's new series, Pathways to Success. My name is Nisha Shastri and I'm an intern at Admit Guru. This is a place where you can ask questions for our guest speakers pertaining to college tips, academic journey, career advice, and everything in between. At the beginning of every episode, our guest speaker will share a brief introduction, no more than 10 minutes of themselves, and then the floor is open to the audience to ask away. So without further ado, allow me to introduce Shravya Vishnu Butla, an MIT alumnus, former Microsoft product manager, and current Stanford MBA student to discuss how she used dance to receive admission into over seven top tier colleges, including Harvard, MIT, Stanford, Princeton, Yale, Carnegie Mellon, and Duke as a STEM major. Hi, Shravya, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Excited to be here. I'm doing well. So do you want to give maybe a brief introduction, kind of overview of your journey? Yeah, sure. Um, so super high level. Um, in high school, I was interested in all sorts of things. I guess this actually started in middle school. And so I was all over the place. I was probably what you would call a well-rounded student. So I did speech and debate. I did, you know, the school newspaper, but I also did science fair and computer programming and things of that nature. So I was everywhere and I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, my family moved to Louisville, Kentucky, actually, my junior year of high school. And so I had to move halfway through high school. And um, from there, I kind of just kept doing the same things I was doing before and um, ultimately ended up applying to colleges for engineering because I realized that the one common thread I had was that I loved problem solving. And um, yeah, then I went to MIT. Great. So now we are going to open it up for questions. Um, we, I'm going to go first go through uh, some questions that we received uh, prior, um, but I will also be, we'll be also checking the chat periodically um, for more questions as well. So I'm going to go um, through the basics first. Um, so if you're comfortable sharing, uh, what was your score on SATs? I know that's a really big part of the college application process. Yeah, so I ended up submitting my ACT score actually. So I did take both the SAT and the ACT, but I ended up doing just a little bit better on the ACT and decided to send that instead. So I got a 36 on the ACT. Um, I also did take the um, PSAT because you take that in school. I don't remember exactly what I got, but I was a national merit finalist. Um, and then I also took two subject tests for the SAT. So I did the SAT math too, um, and I got an 800 and I did SAT chemistry and I also got an 800. Um, so how, obviously those are really good scores. Um, how important do you think uh, is our SAT, ACT scores, or just standardized test scores in general? Um, so I definitely think it depends on where you're thinking to apply to school, um, because there are lots of really good schools, just different schools look for different things. Um, of course, if you're thinking to go to one of like the top 10 schools, I would say your test scores are important in the sense that they verify your academic prowess, but um, that's not necessarily all they're looking for or all they care about. So um, it shouldn't be the only thing you focus on. It also shouldn't be the most important thing you focus on, um, but it is important to do well. And I would say doing well does not mean getting a perfect. So what, I think this is all you kind of touched on this, but what is considered a good score? Yeah, um, I would say a good score is probably 90th percentile and above. So whatever that is um, for that current test. Um, so one person, one person said, I had a rough sophomore year grade wise. I'm doing really well as a junior. Do you think those grades are important? So I think what schools care about is they care about seeing improvement, especially in the earlier years. So your freshman year and your sophomore year, it's um, okay if you don't do that well, especially if you have a reason. Um, you can talk about that reason either in your personal essay um, 
maybe it's important enough for that, or you can just include it in the additional information that you send. But what is most important is for colleges to be able to see that you've improved. So even if you didn't do that well your freshman year or your sophomore year, um, everyone understands high school is hard, things are changing, things happen in life, but they wanna see your ability to be resilient and bounce back. So did you get better grades your junior year and your senior year? Did you continue to have an upward trajectory or did you just kind of stay the same? So I think that's really the most important thing to think about. Um, another person said, is it possible to get into your dream school with a low GPA? Um, it's definitely possible, but I would not say it's likely. So it's going to be harder, right? Um, I think if you have a low GPA, um, you should focus on making yourself stand out in other ways. Why, um, why are you the leader of tomorrow? What um, unique passions or interests do you have that your peers don't? Um, or like what work have you done in the community or in the business world that is truly stand out for your age and for your situation? So um, so it's not required, but you, you need to be able to provide other things that kind of make up for it. And that actually touches, it's going to, we're going to pivot to that a little bit. Um, how important are extracurriculars in your application? And if you only have, this person um, only has a year left in high school. So if they don't have too many uh, strong extracurriculars, what do you recommend that they do? Yeah, so being involved, so doing extracurriculars is definitely important. And I think it's important both to be involved inside of school and also outside of school. So there are definitely um, clubs right at school that are school sponsored that you should be involved in, but you can also be involved in activities outside of school, right? And so that could be um, that, that could be being involved at your you know, local library, or that could be starting an organization of your own or what have you, right? Or being involved in a local um, uh, 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 like nonprofit or something, right? So there's lots of ways to be involved. I think it's super important because that shows that you do more than just like what is asked of you, right? So what is asked of you as a student is to basically go to school. That's really, all that's being asked of you. But if you kind of go to the next level and you say, no, I'm going to foster these other interests, I'm gonna do more than just study, um, that's really what colleges are looking for. And, um, and to the specific question, right, where there's only one year left and you know there's maybe not that much time to get involved, um, it's, that's okay if there's only one year left, right? You should still make the most of the time that you have. And so that means, kind of getting involved with clubs at school or if it means finding your own path because the clubs in school like have already started or like the time has already passed, um, you can make your own path. And I think that that actually shows really strongly that you don't let, you know, obstacles slow you down. Yeah. Um, I'm going to um, backtrack a little bit. Um, this person asked what does your, what was your high school experience uh, like? Like, was it stressful or was it more relaxed? How did you balance your schoolwork with the uh, social life? Yeah, um, that's a really good question. I personally don't think I would say that my high school life was very stressful, but um, that's not to say that it was relaxing. I definitely did not have a lot of free time. I, um, I was very busy. I kept very busy, but I think I enjoyed what I was doing. I enjoyed the activities I was involved in. And because of that, I didn't feel stressed. I was happy doing those things. Um, I also um, balanced my social life by not focusing on it too, too much. I had friends, of course, that I really liked and that I spent time with, especially at school. But I think I um, did focus on those other things when I came home from school more than I focused on my friends. Of course, like I would text my friends and like, you know, we would sometimes compare notes and like do homework together, whatever. And we would hang out sometimes on the weekends, but I didn't hang out with people every day. 
So I think that's kind of how I managed that split. Really? Um, this person, ah, I actually like this question a lot. So this person said, to be honest, I don't really know what I'm going to do in the future. As a freshman, I take all the accelerated classes in school and try to take as many extracurriculars as possible. Do you have any advice for me to get into a good college? So, um, so could you repeat really quickly? So it's good grades, it's good extracurriculars. Um, um, she, this person is a freshman. So what do you, yeah, so I'm assuming um, what should they focus on? I guess they're freshmen now. So maybe what should they focus on in sophomore year to be on track to, uh, you know, getting up? Yeah, totally. Yeah, so I think, I think what what um, what you should focus on is um, figuring out firstly what your unique passion is. What is something that you do really well or really uniquely from everyone else? And I think you should really lean in on that and figure out how to amplify it. So if that is um, you're a really good pianist, maybe that means that you compete a lot, um, or maybe if you just love piano, but you're not really good at it, maybe it means that you start a, um, like a nonprofit program with a hospital where you play music for some of their like terminal patients, right? Where you don't need to be amazing and win competitions, but you're providing new value in other ways. So I would say like, that's, that's like kind of the core of what, what I would recommend focusing on if you're doing everything else as you think about your next two years, because, um, because you want to show how you can take initiative and kind of provide value in new ways. I actually want to expand on that a little bit more. A lot of people were asking, like, what aspects of the application can make a student stand out to admissions boards? Or what is something that typically, one, typically standing out, then I guess it's not very uh, unique anymore. But what is something that college board or uh, college admissions typically like to see? So I think there's three categories that I think about. And sorry, I moved into the shade a little bit. So I'm in the shadows slightly. But um, so I think they like to see, um, so they like to see involvement. They like to see that you're active and you and you do stuff. And we, we talked about that already. After that, I think they like to see leadership. And so this is you, once again, having an upward trajectory. If you join a club in freshman year, and you're still in that club your senior year, did you grow into a leadership position or are you still just a member? And it's okay if you're still just a member for some clubs, you don't need to um, kind of go up the ladder for every single club. But if that's, if you're still a member for every club you're in, then, you know, the question is like, did you even invest any time or energy into this club? And did you just do like 15 clubs just to say you did 15 clubs, even though you're not you know, a leader in any of them or what were you doing? So I think leadership is super important. And then the third thing I think that colleges look for is they look for initiative. And initiative is a little bit different from leadership to me because um, leadership is, stepping into a role of power and leadership in a pre-existing organization or situation. I think initiative is taking a look at the world around you and seeing where there are gaps and figuring out how you can solve them and doing it and executing on it. And so, um, so I think there's a distinction there, but those are the three really big things that I think a lot of these top colleges look for when they are looking at candidates. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And coming from personal experience, I am currently a junior, so it's that time of year and it, initiative is, is really a hot topic. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanna pivot back to something that you briefly touched on, leadership. Um, a person asked uh, what leadership positions are considered good? Like what are, it, is there really a, a leadership position that you should be always striving for that is maybe better than other leadership positions? Um, I don't know if I would say there's like a leadership position that's better than others. I mean, of course, being the president, it's better than being the vice president or like being the founder is better than being 
the member. Um, but I think that there are, I would say that there are like three categories of places where you can have leadership. So again, we're back to three things. So one is like extracurriculars at school, which we talked about already. Then I think there's, um, um, there is like volunteer work. So like philanthropic work, which is a little bit different than an extracurricular, right? And so I think philanthropic work shows that you care about the community and you do stuff to give back. And then the third category is um, like work experience or internships or things of that nature. And I think that is, you know, more about the business world and about, uh, you know, whatever your future is going to be like after you finish college. So it's different than phil philanthropic work. And so I think those are the three categories of places where you should try to show leadership and try to show um, activity. And I'm not going to say any is better than the other. I think they're all three very equal and you should have something for every every one of those categories. Um, so I want to get into uh, what made you particularly unique, which was talking about dance in your application. But before that, um, mm -hmm. I really like this question um, and it's on the topic that we're talking about. Um, this person said, if someone just did things that they want to do so like for example uh, doing a community a community project or community service because they wanted to they genuinely wanted to is that okay too like does everything that you do have to be like centered around or for college applications no no it absolutely does not need to be centered around for college applications and in fact i would say it's even better if you are working on something or working with someone or an organization that you actually actually just want to work with, like you just feel really passionately about them. Um, colleges do not want to see you doing things just to apply to college because they definitely to some degree see right through that and that's not helpful for them for what they're looking for, which is, you know, the leaders or like the future of tomorrow. Um, so I think that's amazing. Um, okay, so now I'm going to get into um, your kind of dance uh, aspect of the college application. So that obviously was your unique factor. Um, yeah. So I we actually got a lot of questions about um, how you incorporated dance into your essays while still aiming to be a STEM major. A lot of people were interested not in dance, but they were interested in music. So how did you kind of balance, still show your passion for dance, but somehow connect that to applying for a STEM major. Right. So, um, so the way, right, that the common application works is that you have your common app essay that you write and you submit, and then some or most colleges have a supplemental essay. So the supplemental essay is where I would talk about being a STEM major and why. And so I did not really talk about that too much in my personal essay. There was definitely a, um, there was definitely a hint of it um, because I, I can dive into more about what my essay was about, but I think I wrote about dance, but I wrote about dance's relevance in my life and why I wasn't pursuing dance as a full-time career. And so because I was talking about, you know, dance being really important to me, but not pursuing it full-time, I was able to kind of say, you know, why I'm not, which is because I want to pursue engineering and, and why. And so I think that's kind of how I included it. Um, yeah, would you mind actually going a little bit more into that? Because I know the story of your like your dance uh, journey, but I'm sure that's a really big part of uh, how you kind of structure your college application. Yeah, totally. So, um, so the story I told super briefly was basically about this competition that I did in high school um, for Indian dance. And essentially what would happen was the winner of the competition would get to go to India and um, essentially be on a reality TV show and even star in Bollywood. So it was sort of um, this company's way of 
uh, finding their next talent. And of course, for the people competing, it was a way to break into the industry and things like that. So it was really exciting all around, very similar to, you know, like an American Idol or a So You Think You Can Dance. Um, and so I ended up competing in this competition and actually winning. Um, and so I was essentially faced with the decision between um, actually, well, at first, actually, I wasn't faced between the decision because um, the shooting was going to take place in the summer. And so that's what I would have done for my summer break. But um, due to kind of like the political conditions in India, the um, the program got moved up to the spring. And so it actually, instead of being June through August, was going to be like April through June. And um, as I'm sure many of you guys know, <laughs> April through June is like final season and AP exams and things like that. And so I I was at that moment had to make a decision. Do I kind of like skip my exams for the year and just kind of call it a wash, right? Um, like not get those AP scores and all of that. Or do I turn down this like crazy once in a lifetime opportunity? And um, so basically that's what I wrote my essay about. And I talked about um, what decision I made, which was obviously turning it down because I was applying for college and um, why I made that decision. And so uh, the moral of this story is that even though I wrote my essay about dance, um, the essay wasn't really about dance. The essay was about me. And I think that's what's the most important is that whatever you write your personal essay about, it can be something as mundane as you know, the color you decided to dye your hair, right? It could be something totally random and totally unimportant, but whatever you end up writing about from there has to tell the admissions officer something like deeper about yourself and about who you are as a person. I, I like personally love the story. I think it's so interesting and so interesting on how you were able to incorporate that into your college application. Um, I am going to take some questions from the chat. Yes. Um, so someone asked, um, will colleges look at senior year grades? This is a really interesting one. <clears throat> Um, so no, colleges will not look at senior year grades for your admissions because you won't have them. Um, you typically have to submit a transcript once you're admitted um, and when you like accept your spot, but unless unless you have totally, totally crazy grades, like you fail every single class, they will have no bearing on your acceptance. So basically the answer is no. Um, I got a question in the chat. Um, it says, would you recommend being well-rounded or specialized and what were you? So um, this is a really great question. And um, I think it's a hard, hard one to answer. I don't think you'll be very happy with my answer, but my answer really is gonna be, I don't think one is better than the other. And I apologize that that's not very helpful, but the reason I say that is because it is it is so specific to each person. I, I believe that I was a well-rounded applicant. Um, I did a lot of things I and I did a lot of things well. So I think what the most important thing is that regardless of if you're well-rounded or specialized, you need to be um, not an expert, but you need to be like really successful at like at least one thing that you do. And maybe it's what you specialize in, in which case you're like ultra, ultra successful because you focused all your energy on that one thing, or it's you're well-rounded and you do, you know, one, two or three things like really well. So I was well-rounded. I mean, I did dance and I of course did dance really well because I won this competition, but I also did science fair and I went to the international science fair and I won. So like I was, I did really great in kind of this like STEM stuff. Um, and then I also was just like, um, very like philanthropic. I, um, worked with like a lot of nonprofits, like started my own organization, like my own nonprofit and, um, ended up like raising a lot of money for the community. And so like, I had a couple of things that were all very, very different from one another, but I did, um, but I did a couple of them really well. Um, this one, I got a question. Oh. I like this one a lot too. So how did you find the right quote unquote fit uh, for like the colleges that you were applying? How did you know for you? How did you know Stanford was the right uh, college you wanted to apply to? 
And also, if you don't particularly know what you want to do in college, how do you select colleges to apply to? Because that's kind of difficult if you don't know what you want to do in uh, college. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was thinking about where to apply to colleges, um, I, I definitely had no idea what I wanted to do at that time. And I really had to take, you know, a couple of weeks or whatever months to reflect and figure out what I wanted to at least focus on for my undergrad. That doesn't mean I necessarily knew what career I wanted, but I needed to have some sort of general idea. And so you know, I kind of thought about like a lot of different paths. I was like, oh, do I want to go to med school eventually? Like, do I want to be a doctor? I knew that I personally did not want to be. Um, and so it was like, I could kind of cross off at least the pre-med track off of my list. You know, then it was like, oh, like, do I want to do like business? And I was like, oh, maybe, maybe I want to do business. I, I like working with people. I did an internship um, over one of my summers and I really enjoyed it. So I was like, okay, maybe. But then I was like, oh, um, you know, do I want to do research, for example, like I did science research, I did science fair, I was like, do I want to do research? And I was like, hmm, like maybe, but I think I like working with people more than I like working alone. So I was able to kind of cross that off my list. And so kind of as I went through a bunch of things, I was able to at least have a couple buckets that I was interested in. And then I um, kind of had like a short list of majors that would fit that. And so it was like, oh, I really, I knew I wanted to kind of go into the workforce at some point. So maybe like economics or business or management or things like that would be really interesting. Then I was like, oh, I know that I really like um, technology and stuff. I really like, you know, like companies like Google and Facebook and things like that. So I was like, well, maybe I wanna be, maybe like computer science or something like that might be helpful. So I had a short list there and that's kind of how I thought about it. Um, but then after that, like, so once I had my list of schools, like, you know, my 12 schools or whatever it is, um, once I got into the different schools, how I ended up picking is like a different question altogether. Um, and so after I got accepted to the various schools, I, um, I, I actually took a purely data-driven approach to it. I didn't visit any of the schools that I um, got. I didn't visit any of the schools before I applied. So that's like one thing to think about. Um, and it's different for everyone. For some people, it's helpful. For me, I personally just, I didn't really care much about the location or the campus or things like that. I was more interested in what am I gonna get out of this school um, and kind of like, where where is it gonna put me post-grad? And so then I looked at, do they let me have double majors? Because I didn't know exactly what I wanted to study. So maybe I would just do a double major. So like, do they have double majors? I knew I liked science research. So it was like, are they good research schools? Um, do they have a lot of internship opportunities? Because I knew I wanted to try more internships. Um, and so it was like a lot of things like that, where I just looked at kind of the like facts of the schools and compared it that way. So I don't know if that was helpful, but that's kind of how I thought about it. Um, this one, oh, this one is interesting. Um, how do elementary years, uh, how can elementary years shape the future, essentially? Um, like, what is one thing you feel you should or shouldn't have done in your early school years? And not even just academically, because that's a little bit harder to um, tell, but maybe just like in general, like lifestyle habits and whatnot. Um, wow, I don't even know if I remember what I did in elementary school, to be honest. Um, I mean, I think you should try a lot of different activities. I think you should try a lot of things just because you don't have as much of the pressure of like academics at that time. And so by trying out a lot of things, you can at least figure out somewhat like things you like or things you don't like. So I think, you know, um, I was fortunate enough that my parents put me in like dance, but also gymnastics and also like softball and like a bunch of different things. And it's like hilarious now to think about like me playing softball because like that's so not my personality, but I was only able to really like figure that out at a young age because I tried it, right? And I like did it for a year or two. And so it was great because I met, I met friends and they probably learned some good skills too about like, you know, teamwork and leadership and collaboration and like playing a sport and whatever. Um, but, you know, once like middle school came and I started to get too busy to do everything, I was able to decide, okay, no, I don't really like softball. Like I don't need to keep playing it and things like that. 
Yeah, I I personally agree. Um, when I was a kid, I was not put into everything. I wasn't, I didn't really explore a lot of things. And thankfully I picked up the things that I liked fairly quickly in middle school, but I do wish personally I had explored more in elementary because of that time constraint. Because um, in my elementary school years, I was playing a single sport um, that I hated. I, at first I kind of liked it. And then I slowly ended up hating going to practice every day. Um, but then in middle school, I discovered uh, the sport that I play currently, which is volleyball. And I really wish I had tried out all sports and discovered volleyball as my passion uh, early on. So um, I think, yeah, exploring is a really good um, thing to do in elementary school. Totally. Um, I have a question um, that I got in my chat, which is, um, what is a good major that is in the STEM engineering side, but doesn't involve coding? Um, so that's a really good question. Um, I mean, there are a lot of different engineering majors. Um, probably the only coding heavy major is computer science, but other majors have other types of coding, like, you know, CAD and things like that, like modeling, um, which is not really programming. So you could do electrical engineering, you could do mechanical engineering. Um, if you're interested in like biology and things like that, you can do biomedical engineering, um, but those are, uh, three that come to mind. Um, I, oh, I have one. Um, is it important to go, is it important to go to summer camps or have summer jobs or internships or whatnot that apply to your intended major? So I would say, is it, is it necessary and is it beneficial are two different here? Yeah, so I think it's definitely important to do something with your time in the summer. Um, a lot of people end up just hanging out with their friends for the entire summer for three months, which is a lot of fun. But um, I think a lot of colleges will also ask, like, what did you do with your time? There's definitely a way for you to hang out with your friends in the summer and also have productive time because you have no school. And so definitely, definitely do something with your summer. Um, in terms of, you know, like, should whatever you do be related to what your, what your intended major is, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be, actually. I think your, the summer should be a time to explore and to learn what you do or don't want to do in college. So uh, like, for example, I said, I knew I didn't want to be a doctor. The way I learned that was because I did a summer program that was um, in like healthcare and medicine. That was the summer program. And while it was really, really interesting and I had a great time, I also realized that like, this was not something that I would be interested in studying or doing as a career. And so, you know, that was an entire summer that my experience had nothing to do with my major, but um, it gave me the information I needed to show that I didn't want to do that. Uh, what was the, someone asked, what was the medical summer program that you attended? Um, it was at University of Pittsburgh. It's called, um, it's called uh, UPSCA. So it's the University of Pittsburgh's like summer something academy, I think. But you can just look it up. I don't know if it still happens, but um, but yeah. Um, I got a question in the chat um, about my experience at MIT. So how was my experience at MIT? Um, yeah, so my experience at MIT was amazing. I think I got everything out of it that I wanted, um, but I think I was also very like clear of what I wanted out of it. So um, I very intentionally chose to go to MIT over other schools because I wanted a strong technical background before I ultimately went to business school. Um, and I also wanted to get a really great job at like a big tech company. Um, and I think I definitely got those two things out of it. I also just loved being surrounded by other like-minded individuals. Everyone there, you know, is very passionate about whatever they do. Everyone has kind of something they're focused on, which is amazing to be around that kind of energy. Um, 
And yeah, it was also really hard though. Like, I mean, I'm sure if you guys have read the blogs from MIT admissions and things like that, like everyone knows MIT is not an easy school and that is definitely true. It was not easy. I was definitely not the smartest person there by any means, but I think it's, um, I think that one, the school teaches you a lot about how to work smart, not work and work hard. They teach you both. They teach you just how to work harder and smarter than you ever had in your life. And what you realize after you leave MIT is you will never work as hard again in your life. Like nothing will ever be as hard as MIT was. And that is actually amazing because you can just do so well in your job, in your next position, in whatever you do after graduating because you like picked up those skills. And so, um, so it was like amazing for that reason. Um, a similar question, actually, how are you liking Stanford? Yeah, so Stanford um, is where I'm at right now for business school, and it is um, it is also amazing, definitely different from MIT, of course, but um, similarly uh, full of amazing, ambitious people. There is a lot to do, of course, in the California region. And it is just so amazing, I think, being in the business school to connect with like professors and faculty and people who have done really amazing things in their careers. So, um, you know, I'm having a great time building a network with, you know, the future leaders of tomorrow who are my classmates right now. But I'm also having an amazing time building a network with the faculty um, and the administration who were already like, you know, business leaders. I'm also going to post um, a link in the chat to the summer program that I did for whoever was asking about that. Um, in the meantime, I have another question. Um, why, oh, why did you apply? Why did you decide to apply for so many high ranked colleges? Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I guess I decided to, I, I think the way that it worked out for me was that I knew my application, my, my strength as an applicant was strong enough that, um, that I could apply to that many. And so it really was just that I didn't apply to very many like state schools or safety schools. I did apply to safety schools still. And then um, after that, I applied to the top schools that I was interested in and um, picked from there. There are definitely some top schools that I did not apply to. For example, I did not apply to um, I don't think I did not apply to Columbia for undergrad, for example, um, and things like that. Like there were definitely schools that I did not consider. I don't think I applied to Princeton for undergrad either. Um, but, but yeah, so basically that's kind of how I thought about it. And I didn't know which of the top schools I would get into. So I think like one thing to note is just because you get into, uh, I don't know, just because you get into Harvard doesn't mean you'll get into Yale, for example, or something like that. Um, and so I don't know where I'm gonna get into. They all have the same deadline. And so I kind of have to apply to a couple of them. And I think I just got a very similar question. How did you decide where to apply and where not to apply? And um, yeah, I mean, some of it was what I talked about before, right? Like for me, I knew, okay, I'm gonna probably want to have an engineering major because I'm gonna go to business school afterwards. And so I wanted that technical background. And so it was like, which of these schools are strong engineering schools, right? And that kind of like helped me filter it down somewhat. I also was able to ask like, okay, well, which of these schools are also strong business schools in case I wanted to do a double major. And so, you know, that was like another thing I thought about. Um, and so, and then, and then from there, it was sort of, it's almost like a luck of the draw. Like the schools are all so similar or so good that um, you just end up having to eliminate based on whatever criteria you can find. And maybe that's like, do they have research institutions close by? Do they let you have double majors um, or, you know, like things like that. Um, I have another interesting question that actually I would have, I want to ask. Um, how do you tackle writing so many supplemental essays for schools? Because it's 
it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it is a lot. Um, yeah. So I think what I did was I created a spreadsheet. I had every school and I had every like prompt in it. And then I sort of thought about each prompt and like went through and color coded like which prompts could be similar or which prompts could the same story fit for. So like I would think about a story for one prompt and I would be like, okay, like which like which other prompts can this story fit for? Um, because it's really hard to come up with 10 stories, right? But it's easier to come up with three stories about yourself. And so I um, thought about it that way and I didn't reuse essays per se, but I was able to keep the general like outline the same. And so, you know, I was able to modify some stuff because of the prompt, just for the prompt, but the, the general bulk would be the same. Um, here's a, just a general question. Um, so did you ever experience a period of time where you were just burned out on how, even if you didn't, how do you recommend you, uh, overcome burnout? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I think sometimes just like taking a load off is the best way to overcome burnout. Um, just kind of like move away from the problem or the thing you're working on or whatever for a little bit and kind of and come back to it with fresh eyes. I also think a lot of times burnout is really mental, really internal, where it's like the pressure you're putting on yourself, not so much the strain of the work you're doing. And so um, I think sometimes just like watching a movie or like going on a walk or just like listening to music, like doing something that takes your mind totally off of whatever it is that's stressing you out is kind of the best way to go about it because it's really just that mental burden more than anything. Um, all right, so we are finishing up. Uh, we're close to the end. Um, I just wanna quickly say, so make sure to follow us on all of our social media, uh, which is linked on our website. Uh, for the latest updates on our latest programs. Um, I don't know if it'll, uh, hopefully it sends. Awesome. And then if you have any further questions, feel free to email us as well. Um, and we can take, I think, maybe one more last minute question. Okay, let's do it. If we don't have any last minute questions, I wanna end on uh, this last question uh, that we got prior. Um, what would be your most important tip for students who are interested, who are interested in applying for selective colleges or uh, what is the greatest piece of advice you've uh, received? Um, I think they're kind of one in the same. Um, I think, uh, you should just be really authentic and true to yourself. You should definitely, if you wanna get into you know, a selective college, like definitely work hard, definitely get good grades, definitely you know, do the things you know you need to do to show that you are a hard worker and you're ambitious and you're determined and you're dedicated. But make sure that while you're doing all of that, you don't lose sight of why you're doing this and who you are. Um, there's no point you know, going to Harvard or going to MIT or Stanford if you don't know why you're going there. And there is no point going there if once you're there, you don't know who you are um, because you're gonna spend your four years just trying to figure that out instead of taking advantage of everything that you're getting there. And so like, I just think I would say it's so important to stay authentic and true to who you are. Like, you know, keep a like strong back and keep your head high um, and make sure that in your essays, in your activities, you are like really shining through like who you are in the essence of like what you care about and why. Um, so that sounds very easy. It's not that easy, um, but that's what I would say. Uh, we actually got two more questions that I wanna cover if uh, anyone wants to hang out. Um, uh, one, someone was asking how many APs you did in high school. Um, I took 16 AP classes by the time I graduated. Okay, and then also our last question, if we don't receive any more, um, how was transitioning from STEM undergrad um, slash career 
uh, to business? Um, I think for me, it was pretty okay, but that's because I have a huge affinity to business. And so, um, and so I was never really a very passionate programmer or anything like that. For me, um, being a computer science major was about learning how to think about problem solving and applying that in the workplace. And so I worked at Microsoft as a product manager, actually, which has a lot of technical details, but also has a lot of business. And, um, and so I think it was like a really seamless fit. Um, and then did you do any like research uh, when you were in high school or like was there a program that you would that you did and you would recommend? Um, so I did not do a research program, but I did do research with a professor at my local university and um, my research was in ophthalmology and so nothing to do with anything that I was doing. So once again, a testament to the fact that you do not need to be only doing stuff that's related to your major. Um, and I got it by just emailing him. So sometimes, especially at your local universities, like if you just find a professor who's working on something cool, um, you just email them, you tell them you're a high schooler, you're interested, you don't need to be paid, you just wanna learn. Um, they're more than happy most of the times to help you out. Awesome. Um, I don't know if you received any questions, nope. Olivia, but yeah, okay, then. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. Awesome, yeah, thank you everyone for joining us today and listening in. Um, stay tuned for the next session. And um, of course, go to our website to sign up for our wait list where you will be the first to hear about our new programs that drop. I'll put it again for those of you who might've missed it in the chat. Um, and then the first one is our website. And then the second one is our uh, official email. Awesome. Have a good night, everyone. Bye.